We're going to look at God's word of encouragement for difficulty. Encouragement for difficulty. So we're going to look at Abraham and the test that he went through. Now there's a cartoon that I saw where a believer, a believer is praying to God and stating very clearly, Dear Lord, I never asked for much, but could you just grant me one thing? Please grant me dignity. Dignity is all I ask for. The next frame of this cartoon picture is this huge zap of lightning bolt, and the character is standing there, frazzled, burnt, and his underwear showing, and he's saying, this is a test, isn't it, Lord? This is a test. No dignity at all. How many of you have felt that way? Life is a series of tests. James says that. The problems we have are actually tests. Look with me at James 1, verse 2 and 3 and 12. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. So blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So God will test you in four areas just like he tested Abraham. I've learned that after being a student for 12 years and graduate to graduate from high school, nine more years for becoming a pastor in college, that it's good to prepare for your tests. How many of you would agree with that it's good? It's helpful to prepare for your tests. In fact, the tests that I would like the best are really the tests where the teacher gives you the questions, gives you the questions in advance. I like those kinds. It's kind of like an open book test. I learn more that way, but the fact in life is that some teachers, some teachers are downright mean. They like to tri trick you. They like to surprise you with questions on the test you never heard of. They put you into an utter panic with their test. But God, God is not like that. God wants you to pass every test in life. In fact, God wants you to pass so much, he tells you in advance the ways that you're going to be tested. So you can count on it. You're going to be tested just like Abraham, four ways in life. And God wants you to pass each one. So he tells you in advance. The one thing about God's test is you, you don't know the timing. God specializes in pop quizzes. Some of you are going to go through a test right now. You may not even know that it's one of God's tests for you. So today, we want to look at Abraham we look at four tests that he went through. Test number one in your notes, the first test in life is a major change. A major change. Look at Hebrews 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when called to go, he obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. God asked Abraham to pick up everything, everything that he had, and move to another place. Abraham asked where? In your notes, that's the where question. The first test is where the where question. God said, I'll tell you later. How do I know when I get there? I'll let you know. Now, would you follow God like Abraham did? Abraham was an older man. In your notes, at age 75, Abraham was ready to retire. Abraham was ready to retire, but God said, in your notes, aspire. When Abraham was ready for social security, God said, you're ready for social insecurity. When Abraham was ready to sit back and take it easy, God said, you're ready for the biggest adventure of your life, aspire. In fact, Abraham was very wealthy, and they didn't have beacon movers in those days. He had sheep and camels and goats and servants. He was a very, very rich man. He lived in the city of Ur in Mesopotamia. I always like to live in a city called Ur. God asked Abraham to move. Abraham picked up everything. He followed God. So this is the first lesson for each believer. In your notes, a believer will follow God's leading without knowing where. The first lesson is that a believer will follow God's leading without knowing where. Some of you are asking that where question right now. It's like, Lord, where do you want me to work? Lord, where do you want me to live? Where do you want me to retire? Where do you want me to go to school? 
Where do you want my kids or my grandkids to go to school? The where question. It's a major change coming for you. It is a test. God says, start moving. I will direct you. You must follow God's leading without knowing where. Test number two in your notes. The second test in the life of Abraham is called a delayed promise. A delayed promise. Just look at Hebrews 11, verse 9 and 10. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. So there's one word there that's used twice in those verses. It's the word promise. So circle that word promise in those verses. I did a delayed promise causes us to ask then in your notes. We ask the when question. Lord, not only where, but when. Promise is a very important word in our vocabulary of faith. The question that always accompanies a promise is when. God said, I'm going to give you the promised land. Abraham wanted to know when. God wants us to base our life in your notes. If you don't ever get anything else, get this today. God wants us to base our life in your notes on promises, the promises of God, and not on explanations. Promises and not explanations. God gave his promise, and then there is a delay. In fact, Abraham waited. He waited all of his life. He waited all of Isaac's life, and also all of Jacob's life. Three generations, and they're still living in tents. Living in tents is living in a temporary way. They could not even settle down. How would you like to live in tents for three generations? Can you imagine Sarah saying, Abraham, when are we going to get to a real house? Said Abraham intently. I've waited for a long time just to say that. <laughs> intently. Most people can handle a test in life. If you can see it out there at an end, the hardest kinds of tests are the ones of life that you don't know if they're ever going to end. That's difficult. A delayed promise. Here's the lesson in your notes. A believer will wait for God's timing. A believer will wait for God's timing without knowing when. And Abraham, he never gave up. A believer will wait for God's timing without knowing the when. Some of you are going through that when test right now. When? When are things going to get better in my marriage, Lord? When? When am I going to get married, Lord? When am I going to have a baby? When am I going to get well? When are you going to solve my problem? When are you going to answer my prayer? See, the second greatest test in life is a delayed promise, the when question. What are you waiting for specifically? Well, God wants to put up a sign right there. This is a test. Moses, see, he waited 80 years for his. Noah, he waited 120 years. Abraham, he waited a whole lifetime. God gives his believers today also a waiting test. Number one, a major change. Number two, a delayed promise. Test number three, the third test on the back of your notes, is an impossible problem. An impossible problem. Looking at Hebrews 11 again. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, Sarah herself was barren, was able to become a father because he considered God faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, as countless as the sand in the seashore. You already know the story of Abraham. Abraham is 99 years old now. He still had no children. God says that Abraham was to be a father of great nations. In fact, God had already changed his name. He changed his name from Abram to Abraham. And in your notes, Abraham means father of many nations. How embarrassing. What's your name? Father of many nations. Well, then how many kids do you have? None. How old are you? 99. Right. It was physically impossible for Abraham and Sarah to have a child. An impossible problem. And God told them that they were going to have children. Remember how they laughed? Sarah laughed. They even named their first child Isaac which means laughter. This kid is a joke. How can this ever happen? 
So in your notes, this is the how question. An impossible problem is when you wonder how. How are you going to do it, Lord? This is the lesson in your notes, a believer. A believer will expect a miracle without knowing the how. A believer will expect miracles when without knowing the how. Now, some of you are discouraged. You're down in life. You're worried. And you are saying, I just don't know how. How am I going to make ends meet this month? God, how am I going to put my kids through college? How are you going to heal me? God, how am I going to continue to do more ministry in your church? I'm already too busy. A test. A test in life. Just like Abraham. So how are you going to change my husband? How are you going to save this marriage? How are you ever going to get through my, my child and my grandchild? This is the test of a believer. A real believer will expect a miracle, though, without knowing the how. Test number one, major change. Test number two, delayed promise. Test number three, an impossible problem. There's one more test. Test number four. The fourth test is the greatest test for Abraham. It's called the ultimate test. It will certainly come to your life also. It came into Abraham's life. The ultimate test in your notes is a senseless tragedy. A senseless tragedy. Abraham faced it. God asked Abraham to sacrifice his own son. Look at Hebrews 11, 17 and 18. By faith, Abraham, when test, God tested, circle that word tested, because it is a test. He offered Isaac as a sacrifice, even though God has said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. This is not the where question or the when question or the how question now. In your notes, this is the why, the why question. Why is this happening? This is the test that causes us to ask why. A lot in this world today does not make sense. So much in the world is just not fair. But who said things in this world were all going to be fair? That's why the Bible talks about a heaven, a hell. Because God is fair. And there's one day that God is going to settle the score. God is fair. Now, a senseless tragedy. More people question this command to Abraham to sacrifice his son than anything else in the Bible. This was a test for Abraham. So in your notes, this was a test of Abraham's commitment. How committed to God was Abraham? It is a test of his commitment. It didn't make sense. It was a tragedy. All Abraham knew was that God said, kill your son, your only son. It didn't make sense, but it was a test. There was another sacrifice that didn't make sense. But God so loved this world so much that he sacrificed his son, his only son, Jesus, on the cross. And it was a senseless tragedy. It didn't make sense. But God commit was committed to us. And through the sacrifice of on the cross, it makes, takes away the sins of the whole world. We receive a passing grade. Jesus' sacrifice offers forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. How could Abraham ever obey God? Well, look at Hebrews 11:19. It was by faith, Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. Abraham reasoned it. And I'm Almighty God, Almighty God who gave me a son when I was dead, when Sarah was dead, this God can raise him back to life. That was Abraham's commitment. The gospel reasons in your notes. God can raise the dead. And through the suffering, the death, and then the resurrection of Jesus, the gospel reasons that God can raise the dead and give them eternal life through Jesus. But here's the point of Abraham's life. This is a lesson. In your notes, a believer will trust God's purpose without knowing why. Because God is God. He has a higher purpose and a greater reason than we do. A believer will trust God's purpose without knowing the why. God is the shaper. God is the molder of our lives. God is not finished with working with us yet. Even in the contradictions of life, you can trust God's purpose. Some of you are going through a why, why test in that life now. God, why am I, why did I get fired? God, why did you let my spouse have an affair? Why did my kid run off and get involved in drugs? Why am I going bankrupt? Why? God, why did I get to have a miscarriage? Why did my parent die? Or why did my spouse die? 
It's a senseless tragedy. So in conclusion, there's nothing wrong with asking questions. Abraham must have asked these questions. The where question, the when question, the how question, the why question. But the issue is, how do you respond when you are going through a test? How do you respond to a where test? When, how, and why? How do you respond? Number one in your notes, a believer in times of major change will follow, follow God's leading without knowing the answer to where. Number two, a believer when there is a delayed promise will wait, will wait for God's timing without knowing when the promise will be fulfilled. And number three, a believer with an impossible problem will expect, will expect a miracle without knowing how. And number four, a believer in times of senseless tragedy will trust, will trust God's purpose, God's character and his love when he doesn't know why. That is a test. Now the key to acing any human test, yeah, it's simple, knowing all the answers. You study, you know all the answers, and you pass. But in God's test, the way that you see ace God's test is you keep believing and you keep trusting even when you don't have all the answers. You don't know where, you don't know how, you don't know why. But you keep on trusting, you keep on believing. Please read with me. The words of Mark 9, verse 24, from your notes together out loud. Lord, help me overcome my Amen.